We do see crude bouncing here on a day where, you know, over the weekend it was full of news about Ukraine's advances against Russia. On the other hand, dollar coming off uh, pretty sharply. What does it tell you about the, I guess, the swing factor driving the day to day for crude? Yeah, and good to see you, Mike. Uh, we've definitely been caught up in the macro influences uh, of the overall market. Uh, here, you know, certainly the, the the march of the Fed and the other central banks put downward pressure uh, on crude oil over the past couple of weeks and kind of bottomed out last week. You, you guys are talking a lot about the various uh, asset classes uh, finding some bottoms. Looks like crude found a bottom there last week, down around uh, 82, 83 area, and uh, coming back now. I think part of the issue is the dollar coming off, and that's because the dollar has sort of, uh, you know, I think, consumed all of its first mover advantage, if you will, in terms of the Fed being uh, way out in front of all the other central banks in terms of tightening, which put a shine you know, on the dollar. And that inverse relationship exists with dollar-denominated commodities like crude oil. Dollar goes up. Those commodities tend to get some downward pressure. Not 100 percent, far from it, but uh, if the move is big enough in the currency, uh, then it happens. And what, what we're, you know, it's very, it's a very uh, clouded picture overall, though, for oil, because, you know, the biggest demand center, China, continues to have struggles on, on a couple of fronts. Its economy, for starters, uh, and now these continued and expanding COVID lockdowns, which seem to come apace, holding back their demand. Demand last month, according to their trade data, down over a million barrels a day, year on year for the month. So um, that's a big headwind. And you know, the, things aren't going well, as we can see over the uh, weekend uh, for Russia, thankfully. And to the extent this war has an end, potentially, one that doesn't include a future for Vladimir Putin, the supplies from Russia all of a sudden are looking a lot more secure, potentially. Yeah, that's an interesting piece of it, because there has been a, a sense out there that, you know, Russian oil has been finding its way onto the world market. It's not as if it's been completely closed off and therefore it had seemingly shifted to more of the, the demand drivers uh, such as China, as you say. Is that not the case? That, that's, that's very much the case. Look, you know, the biggest fear in the market back in March when this, when this war was initiated by Russia uh, was a significant loss of Russian barrels. That just hasn't happened. Uh, the, there's been a reordering of the supply chain. India stepped up in a big way, as did China, of course, for huge discounts. Uh, and now, uh, of course, though, the big worry in the market is two things going forward, if you're, you know, from a consumer's perspective. This, this upcoming winter, obviously, and we have very tight diesel fuel uh, and winter heating fuel stocks going into the winter. And this December 5th sort of cliff uh, in terms of the EU potentially finally foregoing all Russian crude oil. But this, this price cap uh, idea is starting to get some currency uh, because it, it may be more workable than at least I thought initially. Still got to figure out if Putin goes for it or not. That's my big issue with it. But beyond that, to the extent he is desperate for the petrodollars, and that's what those who say that the cap can work is because he's so desperate for that currency. If we maintain the Russian flows of oil, then the economic situation in places like China and some of the other uh, uh, factors, uh, particularly the central banks engineering a, a soft landing, hopefully, uh, come into play and, and keep a lid, if not downward pressure, on prices. That's, that, that, that's interesting, John, especially since uh, so much of the cap proposal had been viewed skeptically. Do you, is your evolution and your thinking, is that driven by the details as they've come forward or a shift in, in Putin's leverage? It's kind of both. Uh, the, the details as they've emerged uh, make it a, a bit more palatable. I'm not sure the, the price capital would be necessarily all that horrible uh, for Russia. It, is it something Putin can swallow? And again, some of the pushback that, that I had gotten from my own skepticism and, and really disbelief in the whole scheme uh, is, is his desperation. Apparently, he can, he can afford to lose the gas revenue. But the oil revenue is a different story. And the other issue for Russia is that they don't necessarily have storage capabilities and would be damaging to the Russian oil industry if a, a big part of their uh, exports and, and supply chain uh, was to be foreclosed. So he may be stuck with it after all. And uh, it, it could be something that's workable. And again, that would help the supply situation.